G'day folks and welcome to this session report from Typhoon. This was published by GMT Games in 1995, designed by Vance Von Burries and part of that East Front series. This is scenario one, last gamble for Moscow, uh, which runs from game turn 24 through to game turn 35. So roughly from the 15th of November through to the 8th of November. I did an introduction and overview of this scenario as a separate video where I kind of discuss some of the German options uh, and the game more broadly. This video is really just a report on uh, progress throughout this scenario. So I'm going to just cut this into uh, a few short uh, sessions and talk about how this German offensive rolled on. What you see here is the situation at the end of the third turn, uh, the end of game turn 26, uh, the 20th of November. Uh, there are some live playthroughs of this scenario. You can check those out separately if you want more detail. But basically what's happened is on the first turn, the Germans launched attacks pretty much all along the line. Now, there were some rules errors there. I erroneously uh, forgot about the need to soak off those uh, enemy units that project zones of control into attacker hexes. I don't think there were too many situations um, but I just completely forgot about that rule, uh, corrected in the second turn onwards. So there were German attacks all along the line. They failed miserably in the south, suffered a few step losses way down the south here, but things got a little bit better from about here onwards. This is where the Russian defences were a little bit more spread out, uh, where the Germans have a lot more strength, and around this area, south of Kalinin, they launched four attacks. This is where they brought their their close air support as well. And all four attacks were um, very successful. And I didn't quite, what I was hoping to do here was push the Russians just back a little bit to give me some room to move north of the Volga River along here to then kind of swing out, drive north and swing out and around. But these attacks in the east, all four hexes were successful, forced the Russians to retreat. It opened a gap and I managed to uh, exploit along through this area and get across the Volga Reservoir by the end of that first turn during that um, uh, mechanized movement segment. Gave me that foothold across the Volga. Just a foothold, and over the next two turns, I've been slowly pushing back the Russians around the area. There are some small pockets of Russian forces um, that are kind of locked in that area. The Russians have been basically forced to pull back to block this uh, this crossing. They're trying to block the roads. Uh, they've been marginally successful. The north is holding up pretty well, but in the center, they're being forced to, to give ground. Uh, this is, of course, the situation after that Soviet uh, player segment. So they have pulled back away from Klin. They're giving up that victory point objective to defend better ground basically, in the east. Well, not necessarily better ground, but to have a better defensive line. Um, so you can see the Soviet line now runs down through here. They've got the, uh, this is the Istra Reservoir. They've got defences north and then defences just south. Strong points along here. Um, uh, the Moskva River running along here and then some positions down south of the Moskva. And again, keep in mind, this, this highway is the last eligible hex that units can enter, so they, so they can't go below here. The defences in the south continue to perform pretty well throughout turns two and turn three. This strong point has held, um, but up in the north, yeah, the Germans have been able to pick off those Russians as they try to pull back, try not to get caught in these pockets, um, and yeah, try to stop the Germans exploiting. Again, this is three turns in, uh, but things are pretty bad for the Russians. They have lost many, many units. Uh, a quick look at the cadre and the elimination boxes out to my right shows that there are three German units um, in the cadre box, and these are pretty small uh, two-step units. The Russians have lost, I'm just trying to do a quick count, about 20 about 20 units, mainly two-step units, look, a mix of artillery, armoured, a good mix, a lot of, quite a few armoured units, actually. Um, so yeah, the Russians have suffered some pretty heavy losses in their attempts to hold that ground. A number of the Russians have been under no retreat orders, uh, which 
gives them another step loss, but um, prevents the retreat. But other than that, it's just uh, a couple of surrenders as well in these areas. But um, things are looking pretty good for the Germans, mainly because they're still in such good shape. Uh, yes, there are, you'll notice here, a couple of reduced uh, reconnaissance units. There, there are a lot of German step losses throughout, but they're still getting that uh, combined arms bonus. Uh, Panzer Division Integrity, that close air support, um, and yeah, they're, they're, they're really seizing the initiative. There is a, a trickle of Russian reinforcements coming on. Uh, there'll be one more uh, cavalry unit, uh, a division coming on in this coming turn, the 27th. Uh, there'll be two more small battalions and regiments coming in the following turn. It's really only from game turn 29 that large numbers of Russian reinforcements begin to arrive. And, gee, that's still you know, two and a half turns away. And the Germans are really doing a lot of damage. So, look, they will, they're racing to get to Moscow. In Moscow. Uh, they're racing to get, I guess, as far east and northeast as possible. They've come basically this far in three turns. And they've got that far to go to get to Moscow before those... Russian reinforcements begin to arrive in great strength. These are fortified um, lines, I think they're called, around Moscow. These are the key objective hexes to, to capture. But really, they want to get into Moscow and seize that um, that automatic objective. So, uh, yeah, as I said, this is the end of the, uh, effectively the third turn of this scenario, the 20th of November. And uh, I'll report back soon and, and let you know how that next stage of the German offensive went. Okay, so here is the situation after three more turns. It is currently the end of the, the sixth turn of this scenario, game turn 28, the end of the 23rd, 24th of November. The, um, the 26th turn, the fourth turn, went really badly for the Germans. They failed all their combats. It was a mud turn. Uh, I think storms as well, so no air support. Um, and they couldn't move far, couldn't fail to, just everything went badly. The very next turn, though, game turn 5 or 27, uh, was a complete flip. They punched through here, two Russian units, and they both attacks went really well with the Germans, uh, eliminated those Russian defenders, and drove along this clear open terrain right along the road across the Moscow-Volga canal uh, into this area around here. They, uh, yeah, exploded through there. The Russians could not respond, and so on the Russian turn, they basically pulled back to their fortified line around Moscow. On the sixth turn of this scenario, uh, which we've just played through the 23rd, 24th of uh, November, the Germans are now starting to push against those positions. Uh, they have pushed inside of that Russian fortified zone down here in the far south. They're still on this highway here. Uh, but they're inside those lines, they're inside the lines here, and up in the north. The problem for the Russians is they've just lost so many steps that they just can't defend. Uh, and it's it's remarkable how many step losses they've taken. And again, the Germans are pretty heavily reduced. All their sort of panzer regiments are, are reduced, but they have the initiative. And so they're picking and choosing when and where and how to attack these these Russians. They did have one combat failure out here on the right. That didn't go well. But all they need to do is get inside these Moscow city area or capture these two objectives, and they've won. And the Russians have all these forces way up in the north that they can't do anything with. They're trying to swing them around. Uh, it's just so far to go, and it's, it's it, it happens very slowly. And... Um, yeah, it's not, <laughs> they're not moving fast enough. There's this massive um, major river in their way, which is hard to cross unless they go all up to the bridge up here. So all these Russian forces up in the north, everything basically north of this area here, can't get kind of get around now. Now that the Germans have captured Zagorsk, uh, they've got, they've secured their northern line with elements of 36 motorized and 6 panzer. 
uh, making sure those Russians don't come back down to the south. Everything else is being sent down to the drive on Moscow. Uh, and how did this happen? Um, well, there was that breakthrough there, certainly, but also the Germans crossed the Moskva River here and got in behind these Russian positions. The Russians just decided to pull everything back. They could not defend all those areas. Even then, as I said, pulling back to these areas, they can't even defend this fortified line. They lost, just in that last turn there, they've lost a heap of steps within these fortified this fortified zone, you can see the Germans advanced, I think, into here. They advanced into here. They advanced in the north up here. Uh, this, this, these are all sort of steps that the Russians have lost. You can see also the um, non-operational gain. Keep in mind this is Typhoon, the first publication in the series. So in future titles, the reverse side of this headquarters shows their non-operational side. I'm just flipping them over. And this is a huge penalty to the Russians. There's a lot they can't do within these non-operational zones, including using artillery. So they're really hamstrung by the loss of those headquarters, which were basically caught out um, too close to the front. And these artillery units should be flipped back over. And the Russians are in a lot of trouble. Uh, there are still three, I think, three more turns to go. But, uh, and okay, another thing to point out, Russian reinforcements uh, will be arriving in gr much greater strength from the next game turn. So now that the Germans are at the gates of Moscow, the Russians get uh, f f at least five this coming turn, plus an optional four at the cost of a victory point. And it may be worth sacrificing that victory point and trying to hold on to these two. I don't know. I think if they don't bring on a massive wave of reinforcements, they're going to lose Moscow very easily. I mean, you've got two defense strength there, three defense strength there. That's a supply unit just blocking the road. This is pretty strong, and yeah, it's reasonably, it's okay down here, but now the Germans are inside that perimeter, they can attack without having to cross that uh, fortified line. Uh, there's still these Russian units behind the lines here, out of supply, of course, they can't do a lot. Um, but uh, they're just not surrendering. They keep passing their surrender die roll, which is really frustrating the Germans, because there's a lot of German... Uh, regiments, brigades being held back here, division down here, just, uh, yeah, slowing down, I guess, in a little way, that, um, that German advance. Yeah, and just looking at the, the Germans in the front here, they do have, I think they've got enough, they've got some very strong stacks to keep hitting those Russians, they have the initiative. Now that the lines, I wonder, I wonder if... Once we get this sort of more static line, if the Russians can counterattack just a little bit. Um, yeah, look, there's a, there's a bit of a barrier here. You've still got that river um, for the Germans to cross outside of Moscow. It's not going to be an easy city to get into. Uh, this is certainly the weakness through uh, Babushkin up here and coming in from the northeast around to the right there. So we will see how this ends, and uh, I'll report back on that soon. Okay, so here we are at the end of uh, game turn 36, which is game turn 9 for this scenario. It is the uh, end of the 1st, uh, 2nd of December, and basically this is the situation. Uh, the Germans launched several attacks on, on Moscow, they failed to capture, they've got, got everything but the city hexes basically. It's very hard to see, but the city runs one, two, three, four, just those four hexes there. This is not the major city, it's a clear hex out to the right, that's a, a city hex as well, okay, uh, and this is a, a wooded hex. Um, the, uh, yeah, basically the, the Germans just have kept pushing in, easily kind of pushing the Russians out of those non-city hexes. I'm sure they could push these guys out as well. They haven't launched any attacks here. Um, but <laughs> you can see what's happening. Massive stacks of five, six, seven, eight, nine counters. Uh, yeah, big stack here. All within stacking limits. Um, a lot of, you can see the cavalry one stepping point. I've got, you know, rockets thrown to the front lines here to just uh, hold that ground. 
Um, and once you attack these major city hexes, it gets very difficult. There's a plus two dice roll modifier for the Soviets. Attacking armor is halved. There's no uh, combined arms bonus. Bonus zone of controls don't extend into the major city hexes, so the Soviets can quickly, easily move around. Um, and look, there are still a couple of turns left. But the Germans don't need... What would happen if, if the Germans capture any of these city hexes, they instantly win the scenario. Um, so I was kind of trying to push and trying to just get in there to end it. Uh, after three three turns of trying, uh, I'm giving up. Uh, just because it's kind of a grind. Every time I'm launching an attack, I've got to flick through these Soviet uh, stacks I've got to flick through all the German stacks because it's sort of these um, required attacks. You know, if I attack in here, I've got to attack here as well. And then I've got to, you know, it's just uh, it's reached the point where it's a siege-like situation um, and everything else is pretty static. Even out here where a lot of Soviet reinforcements come in, uh, it looks dangerous, but it's not because I've got a lot of Germans out in this area. Uh, they can build up a stack of you know, 10 plus defense and the Soviets have relatively weak uh, brigades coming on with you know two attack factors, one attack factor, not a great deal they can do. Um, the thing is as well, the Germans spent to bolster the defenses of Moscow, the Russians spent their, a victory point to bring in these extra reinforcements at a critical point on game turn 29. Uh, so that placed some of these reinforcements in the Moscow uh, garrison, but at the cost of that victory point. And that means that the, the, the Germans don't need, they need one fewer victory point on the map. So at, at the present, they're sitting comfortably, I think, 2, two VP above what they need. Um, so they can afford to lose some ground. Even though they lose, you know, Zogorsk out here, they still win the scenario. Uh, and the Soviets... You just can't counterattack big. Oh, that's actually pretty weak out there. But uh, oh, it's in a it's in a town hex, I think that is, uh, which will give another dice roll modifier to the Germans on defense. It's just there's there's no there's not going to be a Russian counterattack. Uh, Germans pretty pretty solidly defending around the outside. They have the capacity to attack, but it's just a, a grind. So I'm calling this for um, the Germans um, by virtue of uh, their basically victory point margin. They only need eight to win. I think they're on four, five, six, seven, eight. No, they're on nine. So yeah, they could lose one easily. Um, and yeah, look, a lot of force. I've got the 10th Panzer in reserve here, 7th Panzer and some other, there's, there's two Panzer divisions here. Uh, I think 14th Motorized might be here as well. Um, just a lot of German forces available to spread out if needed. A lot of artillery behind the lines. They've still got their air, Soviet air coming on as well. But uh, it's just kind of reached a bit of a standstill. And... Now, once that kind of, you know, the, the, the maneuver right here was very interesting. Um, really smooth movement rules, variable movement rates based on weather. So we've had some some mud, some snow, um, which has made things difficult. But by that point, the Germans had kind of broken through where they needed to. They got the kind of um, the frost break through their rapid movement. Then the mud and the snow hit. Um, to slow everything down pretty much right when they needed it because it meant that the Russians haven't been able to quickly reinforce Moscow. Uh, they've been suffering by the, the snow movement rates as well, which reduces the cost of these, these main roads, just one movement point per hex um, instead of the half during those frost turns. Um, so yeah, that's the uh, German victory in this scenario one. But what it has done is it's, it's made me really keen to set up the larger scenario. This is just the scenario one from this um, typhoon. Uh, it's kind of an introductory scenario. A lot of simplified rules, things like no replacements, air readiness is easy. Um, 
Yeah, the uh, a lot of Russian, a lot, a lot of Russian casualties. It's amazing. Dozens of Russian casualties compared to about eight, nine German casualties. German casualties are starting to up towards the end, uh, but still certainly enough German forces to contain the Russians. And again, um, you know, what we're looking at here is if the Germans attack, they they can get like a two to one, maybe a three to one if they're lucky, um, with yeah, maybe a negative two dice roll modifier if they're lucky. Actually, a negative one, I think, if they're lucky. And if the Russians counterattack anywhere, they're looking at one to one, and that's about it. So, yep, there we go. End of scenario one. Um, from Typhoon, German victory, but uh, yeah, stay tuned because I'm very keen um, to set up uh, some more larger, um, more manoeuvre focused scenarios, maybe from Barbarossa Armour Group South 1941 as part of the East Front series. Thanks all and take care.